Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Mrs. Bridges coming to you from quarantine to talk about something that I seem to have a lot of these days, and that is time. We're going to be looking at standard MD1, which is about being able to look at a word problem and figure out how much time has lapsed. But there's actually three ways to look at elapsed time, and we're gonna do that today. I'm hoping by the end of today's mini lesson, you will be able to confidently say, I can solve elapsed time word problems using a number line diagram. So you'll see, I have three problems here. The first problem is a start and end time problem. I get my start time, I know my end time, and I have to figure out how much time has passed in between. My second problem type, my word problem might tell me a start time, tell me how long the event lasted, and I have to figure out what time that event ended at. And the third type of elapsed time problem, this one is the trickiest. They give me the end time and how long the event lasted and I have to figure out what time the event began at. So let's start with the easiest first, the how much time passed in between. This problem says the concert started at 7.05 p.m it lasted, I'm sorry, it ended at 8.20 p.m. How long did the concert last? So I'm gonna come over here now to my notebook and I'm going to think about this problem. But the great thing about time is that we can think of it like a number line. Our minutes are smaller than our hours. Our minutes, I like to think of minutes in fives and tens, five, 10, 15, 20. And I can represent my minutes with what I call a hill. Then I've got my hours. And hours you can see I've written bigger because an hour takes longer than a minute. There are actually 60 minutes in an hour. And when I'm looking at my number line later, I'm going to be drawing all of my hours as these mountains. So we've got hills and we've got mountains. So let's check it out. As you recall, my first word problem was about a concert. And I was told that the concert started at 7.05 p.m. So I know my start time. So I know my first number on my number line. It told me it ended at 8.20 p.m. So it started in the p.m., it ended in the p.m. And it asked how long did the concert last? So the first thing I'm gonna think about is to go from 7.05 to 8.20, what's the biggest jump I can make? Can I only jump in my, my hills, my minutes, or can I jump in hours, my mountains? 7.05, if I added an hour, would be 8.05. Let me think about that. If I added an hour, it would be 8.05. Nothing happened to my minutes, only my hour went up. Well, wait a second. 8.05 is earlier than 8.20. I can jump a mountain. 7.05 to 8.05 would be one single hour one hour okay but i haven't gotten to 820 yet i'm at 805 and i want to get to 820 so what might i want to count by well if i count by tens that's going to be kind of awkward let me try counting by fives 805 810 815 820 so each of these hills was five single minutes and I got all the way to 820. So I went 705 to 805, that was one hour. And then I went 805 to 820 with three five minute jumps. Five times three, or five, 10, 15. So it was one hour and 15 minutes long. I know that that concert took me one hour and 15 minutes because I jumped mountains and then I jumped smaller hills to get there. Let's go to that next question now. I'll go ahead and turn my page here. That next question said, the hockey game started at 6.15 p.m. It lasted one hour, 55 minutes. At what time did the game end? Now, notice in this problem, I have a start time of 6.15 p.m. but I don't know what time it ended. 
So I'm gonna think once again about mountains and hills. My mountains are an hour, my hills are minutes. And I like to count in minutes and fives and tens when possible because those are easy skip counts or multiples for me. Okay, so I know that this hockey game lasted one hour, 55 minutes. So I always wanna start with my biggest jump, my mountain. So if I jump one hour from my one hour here, what time will it be? By the way, when I say HR, it means hour. Okay, 6.15 plus an hour. My 15 stays the same because I didn't move minutes and I jump one single hour, six, two, seven, seven fifteen. Now I gotta take care of this. There are some innovative ways I can do that, but I'm going to show you guys the single most basic way today. I'm gonna count my mountains, I'm sorry, my hills, 55. And I'm gonna do my hills in five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 minutes. Now, here's where it gets tricky. I have to look at my 715 and put all of those little jumps, those little mountains, I'm sorry, those little hills in five minutes. 715, now out of five minutes would be 720, 725, 730, 735, 740, 745, 750, 755, 760. Wait a minute, there's no such thing as 760. 60 minutes is an hour. That means a whole new hour has occurred. Eight o'clock, 8.05, 8, 10. I know that that hockey game ended at 8, 10 because I used mountains to jump that hour and hills to jump those five at a time to get to 55. One more problem that I wanna show you today, to me is the hardest type. Beth has been baking cupcakes for the last three hours and 25 minutes. She just finished them at 4.10. At what time did she begin baking? So I don't know about you guys, but baking has been a nice quarantine activity for me, eating so many cookies. <laughs> All right, so I know what time she ended. It said she finished baking her cookies at 4.10 p.m. And it told me how much time it took, but what I don't know is what time Beth began her cookies. So I'm gonna be jumping backwards here. I know it was three hours and 25 minutes of work. So I'm gonna jump the big ones first, I'm gonna jump those mountains back three times. One hour, two hours, three hours. One hour, two hours, three hours. Now I'm going back in time. So I'm gonna keep my 10 because I'm not moving minutes. And keep my 10 because I'm not moving minutes, but now I need to jump backwards. 410, 310, 210. 110. Notice I only changed my hour because those are mountains. But now I need to jump back 25 hills. Well, I know I like to do minutes in either fives or tens. So here, I think I'm going to go with fives because 25 is a multiple of five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, that's the easy part. Now I have to go backwards. 110, if I go back five, would be 105. Back of five would be, wait a minute, one o'clock. See, zero, five, 10, 10, five, zero. But guys, don't forget, once I pass an o'clock, once I pass an o'clock, when I'm going backwards, here, I'm actually going to the hour before and I'm going to jump back to 12.55. 
not 1260. 1260 would be 12 in an hour, one o'clock. 1255, then 1250, then 1245. She started cooking her cookies at 1245. I did this by counting backwards, first my hours, then my minutes, with mountains and hills. So, when you are doing an elapsed word problem, what I want you to remember is we can break it down by thinking about, do I know my start time or my end time? Do I know how much time it took using my number line with mountains and hills to help me figure out the elapsed time? I hope now you can confidently say, I can solve elapsed time word problems using a number line diagram. Miss you guys.